Welcome to Eyes Open. It's March 21st, 2020, and this is our second episode of the day. Uh, in the last episode, we just quickly made some announcements, and now we'd like to go into some topics related to Chad Daybell and a recent uh, some court documents that were released of many of his beliefs that Julie is being associated with. And, um, and by extension, I am too. And we are not uh, very comfortable with being associated with some of the false beliefs that Chad has carried on. And so we'd like to address some of the points from this, these court release documents and um, try to infuse some truth into people and expose some of the darkness that's, that has been out there. Julie, do you have anything to add to that? Right. No, I just want to second that, um, especially with our names being out there. There are people on social media asking, uh, you know, if if Julie Rowe believes this as well, or they're accusing me of believing it. And I just want to make sure people do understand what I believe the best way we can to communicate that. If you have any questions, you can go to the Julie Rowe Show on YouTube or to Eyes Open. The Julie Rowe Show has a lot of podcasts we've done in the last three years, and you'll know exactly what I believe if you listen to those podcasts. Or if you read my books... And you can go to julieroeprepare.com and read whatever's on my blog. If you can go to the source and find out what I really believe instead of listening to the rumors online. And uh, definitely don't associate with me with these false beliefs that Chad. I, I did not know Chad had these belief systems. Right, um, right. I, I had no idea. And, and the, some of them I did in 2017, 18. He would say some things to me that I thought were off. Sometimes I'd correct him or try to, or we'd have a disagreement on it several, several different occasions. But, but he got into some really weird stuff. Um, right around the time he met Lori, that uh, the last year and a half, where I've had very little contact with him, um, you know, I I did not know that he was um, getting whatever messages from the dark side the way he has. Right. So. Right, and and it seems uh, looking through them, I'm seeing how some of them have elements of truth, and and that was back when we were working together with him, and uh, it just seems he took some of those foundational ideas that are true and just ran with them, and just you know. Yeah. So I will say this, and, and Justin Lum over at Fox 10 is the only one that has these texts. Um, there's, there are two media outlets that have these texts between Chad and I that, I, that, that Chad and I had back last February uh, re- regarding our fallout and me confronting him on at least uh, how he treated me and some of his relationships that I, including Lori, that I could see him involved in, as well as some of the belief systems that I could see him going down when we had our when our, we had our um, falling out last February of 2019. And um, I don't know if the media is going to release those, but I did give them some text messages, um, I guess as evidence to let them know even before they released this, that Todd and I had a falling out um, before and right around the time he was involved with Lori and all this stuff that was going on. Okay. So. Julie, how do you feel if I just hit some, you know, go to the first item here. I'll just mention it briefly and you just state okay. your response and then I'll just go to the next one. Is that cool? Sure. All right. That's great. The first one, statistics, and there's some uh, uh-huh. sub points. Vibration. The the idea okay. was... Let's, oh. Okay, we're going to go one point at a time, right? Because I want to address each one. Right. Uh, okay. s- statistics is the overall message and okay. then we're going to hone in on one vibration. Okay. They said it in- it's an indication of one's spiritual strength and if you're above a thousand garments are no longer necessary. Okay. So vibration isn't necessarily spiritual strength. It is a reflection on the degree of light or dark energy within or without uh, your immediate energy system. And there's a lot of reason why somebody would have any kind of uh, dark material or energy. It's not necessarily the individual who has that dark energy. It could be something was genetically passed down or it could be something within your space that is clinging to your space and it can lower your vibration. And, And that affects health issues and other things. So you can have lower vibration when you have a health issue. And that is not a direct reflection on your spiritual strength at all. So that is a false belief as well as the ability to actually measure the degree of vibration. He is wrong on the 1,000 and what that means. And um, and that is a lie that you don't have to wear garments when you're at a 1,000. So lots of lies go into that one. Okay. Here's a statement. Higher vibrations can help to thin the veil a little. It depends on the individual. That is not what thins the veil. Higher vibration is not what thins the veil. There are other factors that contribute to thinning the veil, so that is a lie. Okay, I'm glad to hear you say that. We have not discussed these, by the way. No, we haven't. The next on the list, 
I don't know why it's even there. Libido and what business does anyone have testing anyone else's libido? But the idea right. of one to a hundred is um, an indication of one's se healthy sex drive. This is something that Chad tried to talk to me about. He called it creation energy. We had conversations about it and he never called it libido to me so much. It was creation energy. And I questioned him then when he discussed it with me and I said, basically, I don't see how it's okay that you can test anybody's and why you would have that. We have agency, we have personal space and we have our protective shields up. And so you cannot accurately test someone's libido. He is getting false answers from demons or unclean spirits telling him this. And obviously because they're talking about the sex drive, one, very sacred. And two, nobody's business. Right. And so uh, that's just, that's got lies all over it. Um, there, there is something to do with uh, natural laws, natural man versus like spirit beings and creation. But that gets into such sacred doctrine. I would never even discuss it. And um, to actually put it in an email and write it down and, and then have it distorted the way he is, is absolutely appalling to me. All right. Next, light and dark percentage is an indication of how much light in a and darkness dwell in one's body and this idea of it being measurable again that is false we are in a telestial world where things are measured on a linear or spatial uh, atmosphere and dimension you cannot measure an eternal being in a linear sphere okay you can't do it and the numbers that are used in this celestial realm are so limited so so many lives built into that you cannot just measure it and i'll tell you what chad did he had a necklace and I watched him use it, and he used it as a pendulum, okay? And um, and, and this is something else. I'm not going to go into it because I'm working with some people on it, but I, I will save this for later. I can just tell you that what he was doing that I knew towards the end of 2018 was absolutely getting false messages related to this. You cannot measure these things the way he claims you can. You can't do it. Okay. And anybody that claims they can is getting mixed messages and lies. Um, I've, the, another lie that's been told to me that I've had some people say is that you can measure the percentages of how much somebody's in and out of their body compared to, um, you can you can measure if somebody's uh, percentage of like if their body started attached, but you cannot you cannot get a measurement for, uh, for instance, this false doctrine, this pot, this false belief that's been passed down. The Lucifer is trying to t tell people, and I've I've come across half a dozen people now that do energy work that think this is true. There's no such thing as composite spirit. Uh, taking over a body or inhabiting a body for a certain probation. When you are assigned to a body, that is your body. That's your body. And you don't take turns and people don't come in and out. That's not how it works. That is your body. You are assigned to it. It's a lie. That's another lie that Lucifer is telling out there. Right. I'm glad to have that clarified. I've, yeah. I have the same belief. Next theme here is zombies. Let me just read this. Human bodies that have had their original spirits forced from them and have been possessed by either a demon, original third of the heavenly host who followed Lucifer, disembodied spirits who once um, living human spirits who have chosen not to be reborn into another probation, or a worm slash slug creature controlled by Lucifer that enters the body to control the host. You know what that sounds like? It sounds like Lucifer and his minions have been telling Chad that crap. It does indeed. And I'll tell you why, because no one can force you from your body. You can invite them in and they can come in if you have dark portals that have opened up because of pornography or some other kind of uh, vice action, vice or something that's happened that can open up uh, access points in your system. OK, but those can be dismissed. And they can attach to you. In fact, all of us have times where they're attached to our energy system. That's different than attaching to your body. They're attached to your energy system and your auric layers. They cannot come in because they're forced out. That is a lie. You are not forced out. And if you start to detach from your system, all you simply need to do is ask for help to reattach your spirit to spirit, your physical to spirit, and your physical to physical. By simply asking that or, or, or commanding your own spirit to get back in, you will feel more complete and more whole. If you've had any kind of abuse or rape or anything like that, sometimes disassociation happens. People start to kind of leave their, their body. I tend to do it because uh, the veil is sin for me and I've had a lot of near-death experiences or when I'm under severe attack. I will feel my spirit kind of um, detach a little bit and I will actively go walk on some grass or do something. But no one forces you out. 
That is absolutely a lie. Lucifer wants you to think you're forced out because he wants to take over those bodies and he wants you to feel like a victim, like you have no choice and you just have to do what he says right. and, and you're left alone, which then dispels the lies that are, that are coming later regarding Tylee and JJ and Tammy Daybell right. and Charles Vallow. We'll get into that in a minute. I think you just responded to this, but I'll, <clears throat> but I'll just read it. Spirits can be pushed from their bodies during traumatic events or deadly injury. Kind of no. the idea of it being forced again. and uh... No. No. Sometimes when you're in a lot of pain, again, you might start to leave your body. But there are ways to get it back. And that does not mean someone can enter it in. There is still a sacred space there. They can't just come in. If they do try to come in and take over, you can have a priesthood blessing. You can pray. You can do things. But these are not – this isn't zombies. When – uh, people, you know, I don't like the term zombie because I see going forward that they're going to be uh, drug addicts and um, a lot of really rough people in the future that um, have plague or whatever else. And, and they do get possessed by unclean spirits or demons. I don't call them zombies. I call those individuals who are very sick, mm -hmm. individuals who have a drug abuse problem, who um, are hosting hosting other spirits that's totally different than being pushed out of your body right uh the i think this is the last point on this uh put spirits pushed out are trapped in limbo as the body they're tied to is still living but cannot be occupied by them anymore no um they can they linger on the earth if they're still here if they're in a different dimension if you are assigned to a body if you have accepted a body and you don't willingly give it up you are still in that body. You are still attached to it. You can even be in another dimension partly and still be in that body. This is absolutely a lie. What he's, I don't know what he's thinking about limbo. I know the Catholics consider limbo a place, you know, after you die and so you go to heaven. It might go in limbo if you don't accept Christ and some of that kind of stuff. But this is entirely different. Uh, th again, this is a false belief because Lucifer wants people to think they have no control or power over what happens to them and that they're going to get stuck because of something he did. We have agency. We have choice. So at any given point, if you feel like you're in limbo because of actions of your own, that's how it happens, or you've been acted upon by the adversary and have given up or, or do not feel like you have control, you simply ask for light warriors and angels to come in to help assist you to get back where you need to go. And so there is a place similar to limbo. But this is not this is not accurate with how he was describing it. Okay, this is a very similar thought. Spirits trapped in limbo cannot progress to a new mortal life and cannot re-enter their existing body. The not only true. way to move forward is to await the death of their current possessed body. Not true, not true. We have agency every day, and whether you're in or out of your body, you can continue to move forward into the light. That is absolutely hundred percent a lie. Okay, this says this is an illegal action against heavenly law performed by the possessor. Okay, they do do a lot of illegal things against heavenly law, mm -hmm. but there are heavenly laws. And one of the heavenly laws is that they're not allowed to do this. But Lucifer wants Chad and Lori and others to think, again, that you have to give up your agency and that you're just stuck and that you're a victim and you have no choice, whether because you made contracts or because you have curse synergy or whatever else, it's all very real. And, um, and that's a lie as well. That's a lie. Next point, teleportation. When translated beings are needed, they may, with the Lord's permission, teleport to the necessary location to perform their assisted duty, assigned duties. Okay. There are light and dark, po light and dark, po dark portals. And dark beings cannot go through the light portals, although the light the light has portals they can go to, and they can go down to darker realms. Dark realms cannot go up to higher realms, and it's an energy vibration thing that goes with that. Uh, teleportation is a real thing. Not everyone can do it, and um, I'm not going to get into the doctrine behind that or how and who, but... Um, if you are a resurrected being or translated or in spirit realm, and again, there are doors, access points, passages, and gateways, and there are guards at each of those in between those portals. And, um, and so if you, if you are abiding by the Lord's precepts and his heavenly laws, you do have to have permission from the light side to be able to access those doors and passages. And those that are of the dark side that try to sneak in, 
are quickly identified and uh, we take care of them. So this gets into deeper doctrines and agency and everything too, and into multiple dimensions. But um, here on the earth, there are actually portals and they do connect to other worlds and other parts of the galaxy. And um, so there's some truth in that, but he's got a distorted view on it. Okay. This is along the same lines, dark and light portals. Physical objects all around us have ties to the spiritual world and can open portals or gateways of both light and darkness through which light and dark entities may pass. Uh, that's a yes, no, because it gets into other complex things. Words are vibration, TV screens, computers, technology, um, you know, different places of different, different places on the earth and in uh, fields and forests and stuff like that there are definitely light and dark portals and they definitely can open up light or dark portals whether it's a mirror or a picture or something like that but again this gets into really deep stuff and your average person doesn't need to be worrying about this what they need to be worrying about is here in a telestial realm understanding basic doctrines of christ that are going to help with salvation and when they start getting into all this weird stuff then that's when the adversary comes and tries to teach them more of the of the mysteries that they're just not ready for, in in most cases. Okay, here's an, a new major theme here: the Church of the Firstborn and the hundred and forty four thousand. Several points here. Uh, the first one is the Church of the Firstborn is a higher organization and God's church in its truest form on earth. Uh, I hear the word higher. It is God's uh, church here on the earth and into the eternities in, mul in multiple galaxies. And um, that gets in. I would just direct people to leave, read the book on Church the Firstborn that we're getting ready to write if they have questions about Church the Firstborn. Right, I agree. There's going to be a lot of doctrinal scriptural support for that. Yeah. So it's, it's not yeah, to so help much people understand that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe we'll just skip the rest on the Church of the Firstborn then. Yeah, let's just skip those. Julie, I will say this, and in hearing some of your other podcasts and uh, discussions with others, I'm finding some people have a lot of confusion about what translation is, and are right. there are there two sides to translation? Can you describe that? Right. Well, translation is when you have a change in your system where your your actual celestial body goes to... A, a, teles a terrestrial form, meaning that you your vibration is such that you are able tr to transcend or translate into uh, a different DNA. That's that's a little bit. That's this is much that I'm going to get into. Your system changes energetically, and then it, the energetic spiritual system has an effect on the physical body. Uh, so. I'm working on some books and we're going to talk about some of this more in some of the books I have, but uh, maybe we can do a podcast. I don't know. Today is not the day to go into what translation is. I will just say this, uh, the dark side, their version is shape shifters. The light side is translation. One of the things that Chad tried to say in his document was that Cain was translated. I want to correct that false belief. And I'll tell you why, because translation is of the light. That's a light word. Cain is dark. He's the darkest human being on the planet. And he made deals with Lucifer, you know, in the beginning. And part of what he was promised was that he would taste no death, although he he can travel with his body. So he could come in spirit because he can spirit split and he can travel with his body through these portals and other things. So he is on the planet, but he comes and goes to other planets as well. So he can orchestrate the dark worlds with Lucifer. And um, and so he is a shapeshifter. And I see him working with the 13 families in Switzerland that are working with the cabal. He works regularly with them. And so uh, that's that's what I know. I've, I've met him. He approached me in the Salt Lake Airport several years ago. And um, people are going to think I'm crazy for that. But I'm just, I'm just stating the truth. He is on the planet, but he doesn't stay here all the time. And then we have light beings as well. So Cain is not translated. He is a shapeshifter, but he has dark gifts that have been given to him by the dark the dark worlds to be able to uh, do some of this nasty stuff very consistent with my beliefs about there being opposition in everything and so yes. if you have a light equivalent there will always be a dark equivalent and, right um, and we have light beings on the planet too that are translated as well so you have to realize if you know that we have 
we have that going on too. We have the light version and the dark version. And we're going to see more of this going on on the planet as we go through the tribulations and prepare for the Savior of Jesus, the Savior Jesus Christ to return. And as we ascend the, in this world ascends. But um, there's a number on there. I think he said there's 50 dark translated beings. First of all, they're not translated. They're shapeshifters. And again, he doesn't know that. You cannot... I'm not going to tell you how many there are or what, what's going on or where they are or any of that because I don't want them to identify what I know. But I can tell you this much. He's got the number wrong. Okay? He's way off. Mm -hmm. Way, 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 way off on uh, his understanding of this. The next so. point is on the 144,000 saying they are called to bring to pass all signs of the second coming of Christ. That is not correct. I'm not going to go into it, but that's not correct. Okay. In that group, he says, in the 144,000, there are multiple groups specializing in different powers and activities, and kind of alludes that he and Lori will have a special group. Yeah, he says healing and music. Okay, first of all, Chad and Lori are not part of the 144,000 light. I'm not going to tell you what they're part of, but I will say this. There's 144,000 light, and there's 144,000 dark, and Chad and Lori are not part of the 144,000 light. And, um, and so... Uh, yes, they, the, the 144,000 light at some point will be, if they're not already, will be translated beings at some point between now and the end of the millennium. But, but when the, the millennium starts, when Christ comes and we've got a thousand years. So this is a long time period that we have with 144,000. This isn't like going to happen in the next two or three years. And, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to go into with 144,000. I just say he's got a lot of false beliefs and he does not know his own identity. Very good. Next segment, uh, multiple probations. The first point is you must have a minimum of nine mortal lives to become exalted and more to become a god. Uh, there's varying, dis varying definitions of what somebody considers exalted. So I disagree with that statement. If someone wants to learn more, um, they can ask the Lord questions about the mysteries of the king related to temple worship. After two mortal lives, you can choose to sign a light contract or dark contract. That's not correct. I can tell you that after, before you come to earth, Satan tries to get you to sign a contract. And after you come to earth, he tries to get you to sign a contract. And while you're on earth, he tries to get you to sign a contract. He never stops trying to get you to sign contracts on the dark side. On the light side, we make covenants. On the dark side, they sign contracts. He did say neither was permanent. Nothing's permanent. Okay, so some truth in that. You can choose not to be reborn if you're satisfied with your progress. We can always choose what we want to do. The veil grows thinner each time you are reborn. That is incorrect. I'm a witness of that. <laughs> in right. My, in my own life. <laughs> Eric and I have known each other on a lot of lives, and he has gifts that he, that I remember he had on another life that he doesn't have now, and I had gifts that I don't have on the life right now. Yeah, and I've and, I've uh, had the distinct um, personal witness that I've actually asked for them in this life to be withheld, f so that I right. could carry out Me other too. missions, and so. Me too. So yeah. that's that's absolutely a lie. Yeah. Just because someone has a thin veil does not mean they've had a lot of lives. Yes. and you... they, they might have a thin veil because that was the plan for them to be able to accomplish whatever mission they have for that life. And That's the truth. Dare I say, a little bit of arrogance sneaking into that comment there. For Chad? Yes. <laughs> yeah. because, yes. Because he's bragging about his gifts and his, and his abilities because he's got a thin veil. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and the same sort of attitude, I don't mean to cast too much judgment or condemnation here, but on this next point, multiple ceilings are possible, but males can choose one true spouse or have many. First of all, multiple ceilings are possible and both male and female can have more than one spouse and it's not just male. So that's his, um, patriarchal energy coming through. Yes. All right, and maybe just a touch on ceilings. There are probably many that don't really understand what Sealed this is. Sealed up under Christ. Okay. Sealed up under Christ. Yes. All right. Um, and that's S-E-A-L-I-N-G-S, not C-E-I-L. It's S-E-A. 
Right. Yeah. A scriptural We're basically pattern. like a huge family with a tapestry, and it's the way to unite the family and bring them all home to Father and Christ and Mother, because we have, you know, Heavenly Mother. Yes. Good. Okay. Uh-huh. New, uh, new section here on translation, which we've already gone into, so I need to kind of uh, filter these. But the first statement, translated beings cannot die, cannot reproduce, do not need sleep or food, and do not feel the sorrow of the world. Um, injury is possible, but healing is accelerated, and it's never fatal. It's never fatal, he says. Okay. I know on a very personal level that there are several lies laced into that. Can you go one by one and I'll, I'll tell sure. the truth on what that is? Can't die. That's incorrect. Cannot reproduce. That is incorrect. Do not need sleep or food. Uh, they don't need it, but they can have it if they want. Do not feel the sorrow of the world. That is false. Injury is possible, but healing is accelerated and it's never fatal. That is correct. Unless it's unless they choose it, they can still. So there's a mixed message in there. Let me let me tell the truth instead of stating yes or no. They can die. However, how they die is not necessarily from an accident, a gunshot, or something like that. They essentially are taken up and um, are taken off the earth so they can fulfill a mission somewhere else. So they can get shot and injured and it heals quickly uh, faster than a normal mortal being. I'm going to add something almost more for mm-hmm. myself. There's a record called the record of Abaddon, which uh-huh. is apocryphal scripture and uh, has an, has a very interesting tale of Lucifer being right. disembodied. Uh, and so I'll right. just, I'll just leave it there. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, Multi, uh, sorry, translation is done in multiple phases, usually lasting three days. Upon completing the last phase, the Lord appears to the translated person. That's false. It can be done in multiple phases, and it can be done as quickly as the Lord sees fit for it to be done. It could be done instantly if that was your plan. It's usually done in phases because there's learning that someone needs to have in order to get to that place. And it's not done in three days. That's a lie. Okay. Um, there's two seconds. What was the other one? Was there more on that one? Um, the Lord appears to them at the end after three days. No, that was it. Um, let me see if I have permission to go into that. There's more to this. There's an ordinance that comes with it. It's an ordinance of translation. I don't have permission to talk about when and how and if the Lord appears. I would just say that he is incorrect in his understanding. Okay, fair enough. He has two subsections here, a physical and emotional aspects of translation. Um, can, he Those said, are false. Yeah. Okay. There are 50 dark trans... Okay, you touched on this already. It's false. Yep. And that was really the last point that I had here. Okay. So That's um, a lot of lies, isn't it? I hope that helps people. It does show... Let's say in in honesty and fairness, Julie, we knew Chad. At least we thought we did. Yeah. And he, I believed he had a great heart. And I'm still, I still read these things and I'm like, how could this possibly be the friend that I had meals with, that I went to um, conferences with, that came to my home and we had very sentimental discussions with. Um, you right. know, it doesn't sound like the guy we knew, does it's it? It's just not the guy we knew. And so, you know, I've had to reconcile this and, and, and come to this conclusion. Look, anyone can be deceived after a while. I think it is so important for us to stay close to the Lord, keep our pride in check and, yeah. and, um, listen to the spirit, listen to the Lord. You know, I, I don't know, but what, sure. what thoughts do you have there? Well, Pride, lust, and greed open open us up. That's what got Lucifer. Those were the three deadly sins that got Lucifer more than anything else. Pride, greed, and lust. And Chad or anyone else is no different. Me, right? We're all vulnerable to it, especially in a telestial state. But anywhere on our eternal progression, we can become vulnerable to it. Lucifer had ascended, had exalted before he ever fell. So, um, 
it is heartbreaking. I'm still trying to reconcile what has happened with Chad Daybell. It breaks my heart. I've cried to the Lord about it every day. I've tried to come to an understanding. You guys, many of you heard my first podcast where I came out strongly and said, the Chad Daybell I know would never hurt any kids, and he definitely wouldn't, wouldn't hurt his wife. And I have to tell you that um, I, I don't have confidence in that anymore. And I also say I could have gotten it wrong. Uh, I, I have strong doubts now about where the kids are. I cannot get my eyes, my eyes on them in the last three and a half weeks. Um, I don't have any visuals of where they are. And um, and I have come to understand that, that maybe it was my own desire to want to see because we can have our own influences that can cover things. I still want to believe the kids are safe and that Chad didn't do anything and that he didn't do anything to Tammy, but the evidence is stacking up and there's more evidence coming that I've been privy to that, that I'm not going to say here, but, um, but it's at the very least, I can no longer call Chad Dable a friend because I look at who he's been listening to and I look at who I listen to and I look at what he's done and what I see him doing in the future. And, um, and we're, and he drew the bad lines and I am now on opposing forces. Um, so I have to do everything I can to speak my truth and to speak the truth to give clarity to a situation that is absolutely convoluted and messy because of Chad and Lori and because of their choices and the millions of people they have affected negatively on both sides of the veil and who they have hurt. And my job is to speak truth at all costs and to expose darkness, even if it's a friend or a, a previous friend. I cannot stand by idly while they're hurting people on this planet or anywhere else. That's well said. That expresses so, my feelings as well. I, I just, um, I'm still like, I go back and forth. It's like, oh my gosh, did I totally get duped? Right. But, right. you know, I mean, was he cloaked the whole time and I didn't know? Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, I know I saw Chad Abel in my NDE and I know I saw him in vision for about nine years. And I know in the fall, I saw him in vision of fall of 2012. I saw him in vision. The Lord showed me his life and he told me I was supposed to work with him. I have no doubt I was supposed to work with Chad. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt that this was how the, the plan was to unfold and how it still is unfolding. I don't question it. I don't doubt it. And I don't regret it. I see a higher purpose in it and I still see a higher purpose in it that I see coming in the next three to six months and into this, this next year. Um, the orchestration on the light side is fascinating. The plan is rolling forward and the adversary thinks he's ahead of this, right? He thinks he can do this stuff. And the reality is, is that the Lord saw this a long time ago. I may not have seen it because they only show me what they want to show me, but the Lord has seen it. And so they guided me and they guided you. And we tried our best as humans to listen to what they were telling us to do or what I was seeing to put those puzzle pieces together. And so I, I don't have any regrets. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to Chad for what he did to help me get the message out. And I'm grateful to not be working with him anymore. Well, I guess uh, that concludes anything that I've had to say or questions. Um, I guess any final comments before we end this? I just want to send my love to everybody who's listening, wherever you are within the sound of my voice, let you know that my heart goes out to you and testify and witness to you that the plan is rolling forward, that God knows all. He has his eyes on you every minute of the day. He is aware of you and your needs and your heartaches and the things you struggle with, what you're going through right now. If you're sick or you're ill or you're depressed or our family member is or you've lost your job or you're going to lose your job and you have fear and anxiety about the days we're living in. He has prepared us, and if you want to be more prepared, go read my books and go listen to the podcast. Those podcasts are free, and they're energy sessions, and there's over 100 of them. You guys, Eric and I have worked really hard to get to this place to help as many people as possible, and we just ask that you spread this message and get the word out. We have a big world with a lot of hurting people, and there's more coming, and I want as many people to be, to be warned and to be healed and to be helped before crap really hits the fan, because in about a year, it's going to get... I mean, you guys think it's bad right now and I'm not doing it to scare you. I'm doing it so that you can be prepared and you can hear within the sound of my voice that this is not going away. You can't put your head back in the sand and hope you're going to be okay. And I will do everything I can from here on out into eternity to help as many people as possible to return to father. Thank you, Julie. I will say in addition to what you just said, I do think we may see a time where things seem to be getting better, you know, maybe a yes. little reprieve, but it's, it yes. really seems that we're in a decline at this point. Yeah. As we go into the election and the Christmas and things, you know, after they do the stimulus packages and Trump's the hero again, 
right? Because he gave people money and he rescued businesses. But see, if you if you look back at what's happened in other economic crises, they've already said this is worse than what happened in 2008. Well, what happened in 2008 and 9 is because of what happened in 2006 and 7. And it takes a year to year and a half before that really crashes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Over 14 million people have lost their jobs already. But that's going to be a snowball effect. And we're not going to see the effects of that until a year ago this fall. So t the fall of 2021, summer and fall of 2021, is we're going to see the real effects of what's going on right now. Yeah, yeah. Well said. So people have wondered about the Wasatch Wake Up, and um, the Wasatch Wake Up is a, an earthquake I predicted and have been predicting for six years, and uh, the angels gave me that term. Uh, I came up with the Wasatch Wake Up. If you hear about it on the internet, that was that was my thing. The angels gave me, and that's about an earthquake I predicted in Salt Lake. If you want to know more about that, on Julie Rose Show, there are two podcasts. One titled is it's podcast number one titled the Wasatch Wake Up. And then there's one we just did this week called uh, called the Wasatch Wake Up and Other Signs. I'm not going to go into that now, but if you want to know more, go listen to that because we have another earthquake coming. Okay. I think thanks, that everybody. that concludes things for today. Yeah, thanks. We'll yeah. Uh, we'll have another podcast out here in the next week or two. So. Sounds good. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. Love you guys.